In the investigation that you just completed, you uh, were introduced to a new term called a transversal. And a transversal is a line that intersects two or more lines. And when that transversal intersects two parallel lines, special angles are created. Um, just a reminder that parallel lines are lines that are in the same plane. Um, that means that they have the same slope and they never ever cross, they never intersect. Usually when you are able to see parallel lines because they use these arrows to show that two lines are parallel. So again, this line here, this blue line right here, this one, that is called the transversal. Okay. So let's look at some of the special angles that are created. You learned about these in the investigations that you did. So alternate angles are two equal angles that are formed on opposite sides of the transversal. So for example, I'm going to highlight um, right here, that highlighted area will help you to see two alternate angles, one there and one there. Um, we call alternate angles, we can find them using this thing that we call the Z pattern. Notice how that forms the letter Z. Again, often your question is going to have arrows in to help you see that they are parallel lines. So again, if you had arrows here, um, another pair of alternate angles would be a backwards Z right there. So sometimes it's not actually a letter Z. In fact, sometimes, depending on how your transversal is, it might actually kind of look like um, a letter N. So for example, if I had this, and there was my parallel lines, my Z pattern is going to kind of look like that, which it only looks like a Z if you kind of turn it around. So um, the Z pattern helps you to identify alternate angles. Again, alternate angles are on either side of a transversal, and they are equal. Corresponding angles are on the same side of a transversal. They are also equal. So again, if that was my parallel line, my corresponding angles would be there and there. Again, I'll show with a highlighter right there. The letter F helps you to identify corresponding angles. So we call it the F pattern. Um, another one is right there. So again, there's my F, it's a backwards F. Now again, sometimes I could have, so for example, here's another one right there. Uh, and here's another one right here. So there's all kinds of um, F patterns that I can have. Again, if my parallel lines look like something like this, it might not look quite like an F, it might look like that. So again, you might have to turn it to be able to identify um, where the F is, but again, that helps you to identify corresponding angles, which are equal, and they are on the same side of the transversal. The last one is called co-interior. In the investigation, they called the same side interior. Um, so again, if I have my parallel lines, I can find co-interior angles by the letter C. So using what's called the C pattern, like that, or one here, I can identify co-interior angles. The only thing that's a little bit different with co-interior angles is that they are not equal. The angle here on the inside and the angle here on the inside, so same side interior angles, they add up to 180. So be careful. Two angles that are on the same side interior, same side interior or co-interior, add up to 180 degrees. And again, those are um, C pattern angles. Actually, there's I just noticed a typo in the, this here. That should say you can identify co-interior angles. Um, okay, so let's look at this in practice. How do we actually use this to help us find missing angles? So for example, in this picture here, we have to find all of these letters. The first few um, are often quite easy. So for example, B is also 100 degrees because it is opposite. And A would be 80 degrees because it is supplementary. And then C is either opposite to A or supplementary to the 100. The part that's a little more challenging is to find the ones on the other side. So again, you're using things like your, your F patterns and your Z patterns and your C patterns. So for example, right here, there's an F pattern. So what that tells me is it tells me that 
the letter B and the letter F are corresponding, which means if B is 100, then so is F. Once I have that, I know that E is opposite and G is supplementary and D is also supplementary. Again, there's more than one way to find missing angles. Some of you might not have used the F pattern to start. You might have used a Z pattern. So for example, using a Z pattern, you know that B, sorry, that D and C, if that was my Z there, D and C are alternate angles. Uh, let's look at one with a polygon, or in this case a quadrilateral. How would we find missing angles? How would we apply our knowledge of these things in geometry to find missing angles? So again, we start with things that we might already know. For example, 110 and A are corresponding. So we know, sorry, are um, supplementary. So we know that A is 70 degrees. Likewise, we know that F and 50 are also supplementary. So F is 130. Remember, supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees. Now we're a little bit stuck. So what could we do? Well, we know we have parallel lines. So what we need to do is try to find some patterns using those lines. So for example, right here is a Z pattern. What that tells us is that tells us that B and 110 are alternate angles, so B must be 110. We have other Z patterns, or sorry, other Z patterns, yes, or we have other um, patterns that we can use, such as an F pattern. So for example, right here, there's an F pattern. That tells us that we can have some corresponding angles. So for example, F and D are corresponding and are equal. C and 50 are also corresponding and equal, or you might see that C and D are supplementary. So once you get sort of one angle, a lot of the other ones fall into place. It's kind of like a puzzle, and then you get sort of the corner piece, and then some of the other ones fall into place. The only thing you have to be really careful of is if you get one angle wrong, because the other angles depend on that, that your answer could be quite off. So you've got to be really careful and make sure that you understand how to use, um, how to identify all of these different types of angles and use their properties to help you find missing angles.